Good afternoon, Everett families. Thanks so much for joining us for virtual back to school night. This video and presentation is really some, some nuts and bolts about what the first couple of weeks of school will look like for your students, and also some tips and tricks about how you might support your students academically as they um, go through their middle school career. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to um, uh, find the Jeffco Family Portal and find the Infinite Campus link that's in green at the very bottom of the screen. Uh, on Infinite Campus, families can do really important things like view your student schedules. Um, you can check their grades on past assignments. You can see assignments that are upcoming and you can view their attendance. So it's, a, it's an important and wonderful way for you to stay connected with their academic lives and to have conversations with them about the kinds of work that they're doing in all of their classes. So I would encourage you to bookmark that link in your favorite internet browser so that you can see it and visit it often. Um, another thing that we that I would encourage you to look for and, and kind of know how to find fairly quickly is on our Everett Middle School webpage. If you, if you go to the Our School tab at the top and then click the staff list, you'll see that all of our teachers and staff, um, their contact information is all in one easy to locate and easy to navigate document. Um, one of the big transitions from elementary to middle school is all of a sudden we have to connect with and interact with and communicate with more than one teacher at a time. So this tool will really be helpful um, in keeping track of all your students' teachers. We encourage you to reach out by phone or email to any teacher that you might need, have some questions of or need some help or support in helping your student be successful in their class. All of that said, one of the most powerful and important thing a middle school student can learn um, as they grow from elementary school to, to high school is self-advocacy. So one of the best things we can do to help our students be ready for high school and the world beyond is to support them in learning this really critical skill. Um, so of course, we are happy to communicate and, and partner with you in supporting your student. But teachers love, love, love when a student reaches out to them themselves and asks their questions and advocates for the things that they need in order to be successful. So as, as you partner with teachers, please encourage your students to reach out to them too so that they can learn this really important skill of self-advocacy. All right, so a tour of your student schedule. Sorry that my face has to keep moving around the screen on you. Um, so a tour of your student schedule. If you have a 100% remote learner, your schedule will look pretty standard. You'll see that they have a crew teacher and then four um, teachers after that. So you'll see their, uh, their schedule for quarter one and their schedule for quarter two. You'll also probably notice that semester two is empty currently. The district is not allowing us to schedule second semester as we're we're still unsure what second semester looks like at this stage. So focus on quarter one and quarter two and getting students ready for the first semester. Um, so if you're a 100% remote um, learner, your schedule will look like this. And in order to interact with the rest of virtual back to school night, I would encourage you to look at the four teachers that are on your student schedule and to click through this presentation, find those teachers and watch their welcome videos. Um, in those videos, you'll learn more about them as people. You'll be able to put a face to a name and um, you'll learn a little bit more about what they expect of their students and how um, families can support them in, in their success in their classes. If you are a, oops, so sorry about that. Let's go back one. Um, if you have a hybrid learner, your schedule will look like this and it will look just a little bit more confusing. What you're going to notice is that you'll have both periods one, two, three, and four, and then also these one RL, two RL, three RL, four RL. Those RL sections will match the number of their regular sections, but these are the days that they're here in person, and then these RLs are the days that they're um, remotely at home. What you'll notice is that they still only really have four classes and four teachers. So again, the rest of back to school night, I would encourage you to find the teachers videos on the rest of the slides and watch just those four teachers videos that are on your student schedules cur uh, currently for quarters one and two. Sorry about that. Um, again, um, this was in the email and in the newsletter that we sent when we sent out schedules. Please remember that our, our scheduling challenges are 
wide, vast, and varied this year. So we unfortunately cannot make any schedule changes in response to your requests. So of course, if your student's schedule has an error, like they're missing a core class or they have the same class twice, we will of course make sure to correct that. So if you see a, a mistake like that, or if you have a question about the, your student's schedule, please reach out to your counselor. Um, as a reminder, Chris, Kirsten Aronson will be serving all families and students who've selected 100% remote learning. Kelsey Gaines is supporting students um, who are hybrid learning, whose last names are A through K. And Allison McDonald will be serving hybrid students with last names L through Z. So your, your, um, your student's counselor is happy to help um, with any questions that you may have about their schedule. Um, so I also wanted to talk to you about what remote learning will look like on August 24th, which is that first day of school next Monday. Um, our teachers felt really strongly that we needed to give students a transition day from the long, um, restful, and often lazy days of summer into um, the, the rigorous and wonderful and engaging learning that they're going to do for the next two weeks remotely. So there, what you'll notice is that our, our orientation day will have a shortened schedule. They will, they'll start in their crew classes and connect with their crew teacher and connect with one another. Um, and then they'll have their first through fourth period and be done um, at 11 o'clock, 11.05. So they'll be done a little before midday um, so that they can transition from summer into learning. So at 7.20, students should log into their Google Classroom and find their crew class. Um, students should join the Google Meet or Zoom link from their crew teacher there in Google Classroom and they'll learn about the remote orientation and they'll welcome each other back to the school year. Um, students will find the Google Classroom associated with each class period on their schedule and participate in teacher-led orientation activities. So when students log into Google Classroom, they will see the Google Classrooms for all of the teachers and classes that they have when they log in. As a reminder about what Google Classroom um, looks like, um, a reminder that Google Classroom is a digital portal to your child's learning. Um, so our all Everett teachers will be on Google Classroom this year, and they will use it to send and receive assignments and communicate with their students. So as a reminder, as it's probably been a long time since we've dusted off those old Chromebooks and logged into our, our Google accounts, um, your student, your child has a secure at Jeffco Schools US login. They should use that login to any device um, their Chromebook uh, that they have received from Everett is a great one. And if they're having any trouble getting logged in, our digital teacher librarian's name is Chris Johnson, and that's his contact information on the screen there. So you're welcome to reach out to him if your student is having trouble. I would recommend that they get logged in um, just to make sure everything is working on their Chromebook before the first day of school so that they're not frantically trying to get logged on um, that, that early morning on August 24th and reach out to us if you're having any trouble. So again, in order to get started, you would open the Google Chrome web browser um, and you may need to sign in. Um, so you would log into your student's Jeffco US account um, you may need to choose the correct Chrome user if you have multiple Chrome users on one device, and then you type in your student's password and click next. Um, as, a, as a parent um, of my student who uses Google Classroom to, to engage in his learning, I have his profile on my Google Chrome all the time so that I can toggle to his Google Chrome account and view his Google Classroom and see the, the kinds of things that he's doing in his classes and so that I can um, ask him if he's completed assignments or support him in something that might, be, that might be tricky or tough. So that's something I might encourage you all to do as well. Um, so getting started at the very top hand right of Google Chrome, you would click on this thing that everybody calls a waffle because it kind of has a waffle pattern. Um, and then you would see all of your um, education tools, including Google Classroom. Again, that's that learning management software where teachers will communicate with their students, all their assignments and all of their updates and things like that. Um, if your student already has a Google Classroom, they'll click on the title of the class to open. So again, um, by the morning of August 24th, all of their classes will be loaded into Google Classroom for them. They won't need a join code in order to join. So um, those, those classes will show up on their um, Google Classroom you know, desktop or welcome screen. Um, so they, once they get into a Google Classroom, they would click on the class they wish to view. 
and they would be able to see a, a screen that looks like this. Um, they would have a menu of their classes at the top. They would have a class stream, excuse me, that looks like this when they click on it. Um, they would have the class work that's coming up, um, the assignments that's coming up. They would have an upcoming assignment um, that's a screen right here that will say what's due coming up and due Tuesday. Uh, so if you see here, it says this one's due tomorrow and then this one's due the next day. And then um, they'll also see all the class updates and class announcements that the teacher has posted. It's a, it's a really user-friendly interface um, that's fairly easy to navigate. So once they, um, if they click on classwork, this is the screen that they would see. So they'd see the classwork tab. Um, this they would click on to see all the people that are in their classes. So they would see their teachers and their classmates there. Um, on three, they would be able to see any of the assignments that they've submitted. Um, and five, they would see their class drive folder. So if their teachers have created a document um, folder where they have important information, they'd be able to click on that here. Um, and then they would see all these resources um, on the main screen. So again, if you or your student are having any trouble um, getting into your Google Classroom and getting back into the swing of using Google Classroom every day, please don't hesitate to contact Chris Johnson, who is our digital teacher librarian, and that's his contact information. He's happy to help. So um, after that first day of orientation, students will follow the remote learning schedule. Um, all of these bell schedules will be posted on our website, so there's no reason for you to furiously scribble notes about this. But one of the things I wanted to call and bring your attention to is that um, we will have a late start on Fridays from 7.15 to 8.40 to give um, teachers an opportunity to um, connect with each other. And also reminder that Fridays are always late start and they're always asynchronous. So students will not be live interacting with their teachers for the most part on Fridays. Instead, um, they will be watching video lessons and completing assignments on their own. This is a really important time for our teachers um, to have some additional planning, preparation, and collaboration time to work with one another to create the best um, remote and in-person learning that they can. So during those two weeks of remote learning from August 25th to September 4th, this is the bell schedule that your students will follow. Again, this will be posted on the website. Um, so that same schedule will be for our 100% remote learners throughout the rest of the first semester. Again, bringing your attention to the fact that Fridays are a late start and that they're asynchronous. So they're not having live um, learning opportunities with their teachers on Fridays. And then our bell schedule for hybrid learners is similar in the sense that um, they have that late start on Fridays and Fridays are asynchronous. Um, and then, of course, our learners A through K are in the building on Mondays and Tuesdays and then learning remotely Wednesday and Thursdays. And then our bell schedule for hybrid learners L through Z, they are remote Monday and Tuesday and then in person Wednesday and Thursday. And of course, Friday, they will late start and do asynchronous learning. Um, again, some details about our in-person orientation. I shared some of this um, in the newsletter last Friday. So this is our schedule. We'll see eighth graders on September 1st, seventh graders September 2nd, and sixth graders on September 3rd. Please remember that transportation is available for students who are eligible, eligible for bus ridership for these days, and meal service will include breakfast for last names A through K and grab and go lunch for last names L through Z. Um, Please remember that on the day that students are in the building, so um, they will not be expected to engage in remote learning the, the entirety of that day. So that means on September 1st, eighth graders should focus on coming to in-person orientation and they do not need to log into Google Classroom to do a, um, a remote learning that day. They do, however, need to work on asynchronous remote learning on September 2nd and September 3rd. So September 1st through 3rd will be asynchronous learning for all hybrid students. Our teachers and staff really need to focus on the students who are here in the building and making sure that they're staying safe um, and seeing lots of friendly smiling faces throughout the building. So again, the day that they're here in person, they don't need to do any remote learning that day. But the other two days that the other grades are here in person, they will participate in uh, asynchronous remote learning at home. So just a reminder about Chromebooks. Um, 
every student at Everett should have a Chromebook. Um, that's something that you can pick up and in the um, in our virtual, or excuse me, at our uh, materials pickup event that's this afternoon and evening. Um, so please make sure that your student has the Chromebook. And if they are hybrid learners, they need to bring that Chromebook with them to school every day fully charged because they'll be using them in the classrooms for learning even when they're here in the building. So make sure that your students get in a good habit of taking their Chromebooks out of their backpacks, um, plugging them in, and getting them charged up for the next day of learning. It's a, it's a great habit to build um, early on in the school year and keep throughout the school year. All right, so um, when you are picking up and dropping off your students, please remember that the route through the parking lot is all the way around this loop and make sure that um, Mr. Martinez, our campus supervisor, will be out directing traffic when our, um, when our buses are coming in. So please make sure you're being courteous and kind to each other um, and that you are continuing to move throughout this loop um, and not stopping to park anywhere in, in this traffic pattern. All right, so sixth grade families, we are having outdoor lab this year. It will look a little bit different and we don't have all of the details just yet. Um, what we do know is that our school will be going to outdoor lab on November 16th through the 20th and we'll be headed to both sites. Um, students will be assigned to a site um, based on their crew teacher and students will not stay overnight this year. Um, th those are the details I have as of right now. We'll have a parent meeting on Monday, September 14th at six o'clock on Zoom. Um, we'll send the Zoom link on the uh, Everett Family Newsletter here soon, and more information will be available about exactly what Outdoor Lab will look like as those two sites are, are working out some of their procedures in order to do Outdoor Lab safely this year. Um, please make sure that um, you check, you continue to check the Outdoor Lab website at jeffcooutdoorlab.com and the Outdoor Lab Foundation website, outdoorlabfoundation.org. That website includes information about um, how, to, how to get donations and community partnerships and um, how you might raise money in order to um, pay for your students' Outdoor Lab experience. At this point, we're not sure exactly what the fee will look like um, or many of the other details that you might have questions about. We're waiting for Outdoor Lab to give us that information um, and hopefully we'll be able to share all of that on September 14th. So thanks for your patience with us with that. All right, the other thing I wanna make sure to encourage you to do is to connect with our incredible Everett family and parent communities. Um, on the first Wednesday of every month, starting at 6.30, our PTA will meet. And then at 7.30, our school advisory committee will meet. So our PTA is really an organization that supports our teachers um, and um, supports our staff through raising funds and building community. Our school advisory committee or our accountability committee um, helps advise me on decisions about instruction and curriculum and, and that kind of thing. We look at data together and make decisions that are collaborative for um, the best learning experiences for our students. So if either one of those committees or both of them are of interest to you, I would love to have you come be a part of those conversations. Um, if you're not a meeting person, which I certainly understand, I would still encourage you to join the PTA by completing the form um, and, and paying the dues. Again, if you, if you join PTA, you will never be expected to um, come to a meeting or sell wrapping paper or anything like that. It just means that you're a part of our parent organization. We would love to have you. And um, even if you're not a member of PTA, the middle school, our Everett Middle School PTA Facebook page is a wonderful way to connect with other parents um, and to ask questions and share information about Everett. Um, so we are hopeful that you will engage and be connected to those parent communities. All righty. Finally, um, one of the our the best source of up to date information will always be our Everett.jeffcopublicschools.org website. Um, Mr. Johnson is our new digital teacher librarian. Um, Lindsay Garlow was lucky to get an instructional coaching position over at Jefferson High School. So Chris has um, stepped in and stepped up and has done a wonderful job um, supporting the staff with technology. Um, so he's he's frantically working to to get our up. Uh, website up to date 
And by Friday afternoon, um, all the details about hybrid and remote learning and orientation and all of that good stuff will be on the website. So please, if you have questions, if you're curious about something, the website is a wonderful source of information that can hopefully give you the answers that you need. Um, I wanted to remind you all of our um, live Zoom event this evening at seven o'clock. If, if there are questions that this presentation um, or this, this group of presentations doesn't answer, please join us for that. The next video that you're about to see are um, some safety procedures and some details about in-person orientation. Um, and we're hopeful that you will watch those with your students so that they can see one, our as assistant principals being silly and some of their peers in a safety video and then get some details about um, what entrances they would be coming into for the building for in-person learning. Thank you again for joining us for Back to School Night and I'm hopeful that I get to see you this evening and I'm so glad that I got to see some of you in person this afternoon for our materials pickup event. Thanks so much.